Hello, this is a clip number five of session number one. And uh, in this uh, clip, we are going to discuss requirements, development and management. What is the meaning of requirement development and what is the meaning of requirement management? So there is a, a very huge confusion, a lot of confusion about the requirements terminology, which extends uh, even to uh, what to call the whole discipline. So some may call the entire domain as requirements engineering and others refer to it uh, as a requirement management only. And a few refer to these activities as a subset of a broad domain of business analysis. So there are different, different perceptions about requirement terminologies. So in this clip, we will discuss about requirements development and management. What does this mean actually? Uh, generally, I find it useful to split requirements engineering into two parts. One, requirements development and second, requirements management. So regardless of what development life cycle uh, your project is following, uh, be it uh, pure waterfall, phased, iterative, uh, incremental, agile or some hybrid uh, life cycle, uh, these are the things you need to uh, do the uh, uh, do regarding the requirements that requirement development and requirement management now depending on the life cycle uh, you will perform these activities at different times in the project or project life cycle and uh, that too varying uh, to different degrees of depth or details as per the projects or the size of the project now i will talk about requirements development only now, requirements development, it is subdivided into uh, multiple parts like elicitation, analysis, specification, and validation. Now, these sub-disciplines encompass all the activities involved with exploring, evaluating, documenting, and confirming the requirements for a product. So now we look at all these activities one by one. Now, first is elicitation. Elicitation encompasses all of the activities involved with discovering the requirements such as uh, interviews, workshops, uh, maybe document analysis, prototyping and related kind of activities. The key actions in the elicitation are uh, identifying the products expected user classes and other stakeholders. That is the first important activity and second is understanding user tasks and goals and the business objectives with which uh, you need to align your tasks. So user tasks, goals and business objectives, that is second most important. Now the other things which are part of elicitation are like learning about the environment in which the new product will be used and working with the individuals who represent each user class to understand their functionality needs and their quality expectations. So generally communication is the key in case of uh, elicitation how you communicate, what you communicate, and at what time you communicate. That is uh, the important part of elicitation. Now the second activity is analysis. So analyzing requirements involves uh, reaching uh, to more precise understanding of each requirement and then representing uh, sets of requirements in multiple ways. So if you want to talk about the important activities of analysis, then uh, it can be uh, analyzing the information received from the users to distinguish their task goals from, from the functional requirements, quality expectations and business rules. Uh, they can also talk about suggested solutions and related information. Then analysis can also involve decomposing high level requirements into an appropriate level of details. Then it also involves deriving functional requirements from other requirements information. Then it also involves understanding the relative importance of quality attributes. Allocating requirements to software components uh, which are defined in the system architecture, then negotiating implementation priorities, uh, or, or even the uh, identifying the gaps in requirements or unnecessary requirements as they relate to some uh, undefined scope. So all these things comes under analysis phase. The third activity or the third phase is specification. 
So requirements spe uh, specification involves uh, representing and storing the collected requirements knowledge in a persistent and well-organized fashion. So documenting, in short, documenting the requirements. So it uh, involves translating the collected user needs into written requirements and diagrams, which are suitable for comprehensions, reviews, and used by uh, their intended audiences or users or developers, testers. So that is part of specification. So if you have seen all the activities like from elicitation and analysis specification, in elicitation, we communicate with different users, different uh, groups of the users from the client side, and we try to get maximum information. In analysis phase, we do analysis of all the collected information and we uh, 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 create kind of relevance between all the collected information points. And then in specification, we document those requirements. And the last one is the uh, fourth phase is validation. So requirements validation confirms that you have the correct set of requirements information that will enable developers to build a solution that satisfies the business objectives. So uh, in case of validation, the activities can be like uh, reviewing the documented requirements, which are part of the specification. So we uh, must be having documented requirements. So uh, do, doing the review of the documented requirements and to correct any problems before the development group accepts them and starts working on that. And the second important activity of validation phase is uh, kind of developing acceptance tests and criteria to confirm that a product based on the requirements would meet customer needs and achieve the business objectives. So both the things comes under validation. Now iteration is a key to requirement development uh, success, success of the requirement development. So plan for multiple cycles of uh, exploring requirements, progressively refining high level requirements into more precision and details and confirming uh, correctness with users and that's why we call it as iterative process because you cannot go and collect all the requirements in one single meeting so you have to have multiple visits for different uh, user groups and then you have to have multiple visits uh, just to uh, validate your requirements and to confirm your requirements so it's an iterative process so this takes time and it can be frustrating uh, it's a it's an intrinsic uh, aspect of dealing with the fuzzy uncertainty of defining a new software system but uh, this is a very important step though it will take some time and it will take some efforts but it is a very important uh, phase of the uh, uh, development life cycle of any software now i'll talk about requirements management uh, this diagram provides another view of the boundary between requirements development and requirements management. So when I say requirement management activities, uh, it can be defining the requirements baseline. So when I say requirements baseline, it is a snapshot in time that represents an agreed upon, reviewed and approved set of functional and non-functional requirements, often for a specific product release or a, or a, a specific iteration of the release. So that is a requirement baseline. What is the basic minimum uh, acceptance? That is a requirements baseline. Then uh, it can also uh, uh, involve evaluating the impact of uh, proposed requirements changes and incorporating approved changes in the project in a controlled way. But then keeping the project plans current with the requirements as they evolve. Then negotiating new commitments based on the estimated impact of the requirement changes. If any new requirement is, requirement is coming, then uh, looking at the scope of the requirement, you also have to do the negotiation. Then defining the relationship and dependencies that exist between the uh, multiple requirements because you will get requirements from different, different user groups. So you have to think about and analyze the relationship and dependencies between the requirements. Then tracing uh, the individual requirements to their corresponding design, source codes, tests, use cases, and tracking the requirement status and change activity throughout the project. So all these things comes under requirements management. So the object of requirement management 
is uh, not to handle the change or to make it difficult actually it is to anticipate and accommodate the very real changes that you can always expect so as to minimize their disruptive impact on the project as a uh, project life cycle as a whole project so that is the meaning of requirement management so uh, that is the end of clip number 5 where we have discussed requirements development and requirements management in details